shall we pray? Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you honor and I give you adoration. I ask you that you will use me just as an instrument in your hands. Father, I am nothing without you. I can do nothing without you. I am speechless without you. And I pray that, Lord, you just make me an instrument in your hand. That I will speak what you have laid on my heart. I believe that you have a word for somebody here. And I pray that the word will touch every soul to the core. Amen. That our spirits will yearn after you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. This morning the Lord has laid on my heart to minister on a series, Growing in Christ. But first of all, he wants us to do the foundation of growing in Christ. Before anybody will come to grow in Christ, we need to first believe in Christ. Hallelujah. We need to first believe in Christ. And the Bible tells me in the book of Mark 8, there are about 37, it says, And what shall it profit a man? Hallelujah. What shall it profit you and me? If I gain everything in this world and I lose my soul, what shall I profit if I can buy the cars and the shoes and do all the things and lose my soul? So basically God is saying that our soul is important. And the Bible tells me this morning as we were praying at the back office, the Lord just gave me a scripture in Ezekiel 33, verse 11, there about. And I asked the brother I was praying with, let's pray. He says that he does not desire or delight in the death of a sinner. Hallelujah. And he says that he wants us to prepare our spirit and our soul ready for his coming. Beloved, whether we like it or not, God is coming soon. And we can come to church 24-7, but our heart might not be for Christ. So God wants to give us an opportunity this morning to re-surrender our life to him and to say, God, I may know you, I may have known you, but I have drifted away from you. But I want you to give me another opportunity and another chance. So there's a man, a, a, a Pharisee who came to Jesus Christ in the book of John 3, verse 1 to about 21. I'll summarize it, but I'll see if I can read a bit of it. The Bible says that there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader, who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus, miraculous signs. He came to speak with Jesus. And he said, Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, he exclaimed. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. They were the educator people in that society at that time. They knew the word inside out. But yet, he did not understand that spiritual sense. And the Bible says that unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And he says, what do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How? Can an old man like me go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter into the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows and comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you do not understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what you, we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe it or our testimony. But if you do not believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe me? about heavenly things. No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the son of man who has come down from the earth, and Moses has lifted up the bronze, just as Moses lifted up the bronze snake as a, on a pole in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him have eternal life, hallelujah. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, 
that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son unto the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know where you are in your Christian walk. I don't know how long you have been in church for. But beloved, the beginning point and the starting point is us surrendering our lives to God. Hallelujah. So you may have been to church many times. You may have heard of the name of God. But you may not have given your life to Christ. And you're coming in Monday. You're coming in on Wednesdays. You're coming in on commanding your future. But you have no personal relationship with God. But the Bible says that without that relationship with God, none of us can see the kingdom of God. And beloved, life is not worth it. If after death, we cannot see Christ. Hallelujah. So we are accountable. And the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, he says that, for it is appointed unto man once to die. And the Bible says, after death there is judgment. But beloved, if you know the Christ you serve, and you invite him to dine with you, and you invite him to live in you, and you invite him to be your Lord and your personal Savior, so that when he says, do this, you do this. Just as the song says, that whatever it takes, whatever you want, God help me say yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Many times we want to do our own things. Hallelujah. We decide, God tells us to go this way, but we choose deliberately and consciously we decide that we are not going this way because we want to enjoy life. But the Bible tells me that, what shall it profit a man if you can drive that big Grand Cherokee, you can drive and live in that big mansion house. You can drive the most and wear the most expensive shoe. You can gain all the things in the world and you lose your salvation. What shall that profit us? Hallelujah. God wants relationship with us. So the Bible says, so he sent Christ on earth. So even though Nicodemus was a, a, a Pharisee, he knew the word. He was a religious man. In the eyes of the, the, the people, they thought that he knew Christ, but he had no clue how to become born again. So the Bible says that unless you are born again, so beloved, don't think that because you come to church on a Sunday by Sunday, on a Wednesday by Wednesday, on a Monday by Monday, it's your heart for God. Have you given your life to Christ? When Christ comes and the day of reckoning comes, would you be able to say, God, I said yes. I said yes to your will. Whatever it took, whatever it took, whatever the sacrifice was, in the rain, I was able to do what you asked me to do. Hallelujah. That I reach out to the people. Hallelujah. Most of the time, we are happy to say, God, come and be my savior. But we don't want him to be the Lord of our lives. Yes, he has come. And the Bible says that just as Moses raised the snake and the people had to look at the snake to have deliverance, he says that so Christ was raised on the cross for me and for you. Hallelujah. So God wants a relationship with you. He is the bridge for us to reach God. It is not about what your mother is doing. We cannot go to heaven on the, on the basis of our parents. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot go to God on the basis of our wife's experience of God. God will hold us individually accountable. Hallelujah. And he says, unless we give our lives to Christ, unless we become born again, unless we surrender our heart, unless we say that, yes, Lord, church is useless. The songs we sing is useless. The drama we do in prayer is useless. Everything we do is useless. The big offerings you give is useless. The tithing you put in that envelope and you say it's a 10% is useless. If your heart doesn't belong to God. And for me, I just want to reflect. And I want my life to please God. And I've said to God this week, and I said, God, whatever it takes... Whatever you want, I want my heart to be for you Amen. and only you. Amen. And so Nicodemus comes in and says, how can a man enter the kingdom of God? 
And he says, be born again. This morning, I don't know who has given their life to Christ or who has not given their life to Christ. If we are going to grow in the Lord, if we are going to grow in, in evangelism, if we are going to grow in ministry, and if we are going to grow in the service of God, it begins with us surrendering our lives unto him and saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, whatever you say, whatever you mean, whatever you want me to do, that is what I will do. And beloved, I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching at myself as well. Hallelujah. And I'm not exonerating myself because a life that is unexamined is not a life worth living. So you might have been in Christ and you have fallen off the road. Beloved, God will ask you questions. And he will ask, what did you do with the time I gave you? What did you do with the days I gave you? For me, I do not want to see God. And I want to always say that, God, I will tell you the truth as it is. If somebody takes it, fine. If they don't take it, one day when I stand before God, I said I said it. Amen. But I was not responsible because I cannot be God's bodyguard over people's life. But the duty is to speak. And ask the Lord himself to take absolute control. So beloved, today is not a preaching that we are going to jump about. Just examine yourself. Are you in church or have you really given your life to Christ? Is God the Lord of your life? Or are you coming because somebody beckons you to come every Sunday? The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that in John, um, 1 John 5, about 11 there about, it says, and this is the testimony that God has given us life. And he says that this life is in Christ. And he says that he who has the son has life. But he who does not have the Son of God has no life. This morning, have you got life? You may be breathing, but spiritually, are you alive? If God wants to ask you on a one-to-one, -one, just corner to corner, and say, is your life pleasing to me? The things you do in your closet, can I approve of it? What would your answer be to God this morning? So Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door, and I knock. And I knock. He describes the church of Laodicea. And he says, I know your works. He says, I know your works. He says, you are neither warm nor you are cold. Hallelujah. He says, when I come, I will spew you out. Beloved, your judgment of your Christian life should not be based on another person. Because we all falter and we all make mistakes. What you need to do is to have a relationship with your God, a personal relationship with God, and be responsible and accountable for your own life. Hallelujah. Are you born again this morning? Have you surrendered your life to Christ? Or have you dwindled? Or have you just derailed along the way? But this morning, God is cautioning all of us to say he wants us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to come closer to him. So the Bible says, in 1 John 5, 1 to 12, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is Lord has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandment. How obedient are we when no one is watching? When your mom is not there? When your sister is not there? When the pastor is not there? When the deacon or the deaconess is not there? Where? The friend is not there. How? What's your theme? The theme of your heart. For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And we can win this battle against the world. The world has so much that wants to take our soul away. The songs we listen to. The music. The lyrics. Sometimes you listen to a, a, a music. If it's not of God, sometimes at work you have no control over the music, especially if you work in retail. Sometimes the kind of song they play, you have no control over it. And sometimes it plays in your spirit, plays in your spirit, before you realize you are singing it unconsciously. 
And be beloved, it feeds into your spirit. But have you realized that when you sing worship song, that worship songs, things that fill your spirit, you feel enlightened in the Lord. You feel spiritually strong. Do, do, have you noticed that? So sometimes it's good to allow the good music to play over your soul even as you sleep. Because as you are sleeping, the Lord is operating your spirit. The Lord is taking away things that are not right for you. The Lord is delivering you in places that you do not even know. So it is okay sometimes to even just play the music subtly in the background. If that is what you are trusting God for. And I know sometimes the youth, you think that we are hard on you. And you, it doesn't matter what you listen to. But beloved, every musician has a spirit. Yeah. That is why the Bible says that no one can serve two masters. Every music has a spirit behind it. And I pray that you will choose the right ones. Amen. That will feed your spirit and feed your soul. Amen. Unless a man is born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. I am not responsible for salvation. God has just called us and we are instruments in his hands. We are just voices that he uses. Hallelujah. And if we choose to shut our mouth, you will find another person next door. And you will use them anyway. Because the word of God cannot be shut up. So if God wants to use you and you choose not to be used, God will jump to the next person. Yeah. And I pray that God will touch our hearts. Amen. That we will allow ourselves to be used of God. Amen. That we will not tick the boxes for anybody. Amen. But we will know that God is the God Amen. who is able and he's Amen. watching. And he's seeing. He sees the heart of every man. Hallelujah. He sees the heart of every man. And he says that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ has become a child of God. Unfortunately, sometimes because of the busyness of life, we are not able to check. Everyone has really given their life to Christ. And people come and you assume that they have given their lives to Christ. But this morning, I don't want to assume that your life is for Christ. You have to make that personal choice. You have to make that personal decision. It's not about your husband. It is not about your wife. It is not about your friend next door. It is about you and God. So when I stand in front of my God, I stand as an individual. So find your way to your God. How do you relate to God your own way? Hallelujah. Don't take my box. The way I want my thing, when I want my soup, I want it really hot. And sometimes I'm drinking and I'm coughing. And then people around me are thinking, am I crazy? But for me, there's a joy. When I find that the soup is spicy, even if it makes me cough, sometimes I cough, I stop, I get water, That's then I continue. Yes. That is me, hallelujah. The point I'm trying to say that salvation is an individual matter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't come to church and not have a relationship with God. Because when the day of reckoning comes, it will be you and your God. Yes. Your style might not be my style. Your ways of serving God might not be your way of serving him. But every genuine Christian will bear the fruit of the Spirit. And what does the Bible say the fruit of the Spirit is? Love, patience, temperance, you know, kindness. All the good things you will begin to bear. Because we will see that Christ is in you. But beloved, if Christ is not in you, we will see the manifestation of the other side of the fruit of the flesh. And I pray that God will help us. That we will nurture our spirit and our soul. That we will yield ourselves to God. That we will ask God to take absolute control over our lives. That it is, doesn't matter if our parents came to church. We will find ourselves to church anyway. Because we know that is where we meet with God. On a weekly basis to have revival. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. If your brother refuses to come to church, you will find a way to come to church because you know it's a meeting place for you and God. Hallelujah. Amen. That you will develop a personal relationship with God. That you will make sure that you're reading your Bible and you are growing in the Lord. Hallelujah. David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That you will cultivate the habit of reading the word of God every day before you go out. Before you start your day. Sometimes we start our day and because the Lord is not the Lord of our lives. We just get up 
we can do all the things that we need to do, but we forget to read the Bible. And then we fall into things that if we had heard and we had listened and we had read the word of God, he would have given us direction Amen. and he would have cautioned us. So beloved, I want you to know that God wants a relationship with you. Amen. Your relationship is not with the pastor. Your relationship is not with the music director. Your service in the ministry is your service to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And beloved, if it's only five people that will be able to hear thou says the Lord and do it, hopefully when we get to heaven, God will say thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Amen. Because sometimes we are so conscious of the crowd that we compromise so much. Yeah. And we say it's okay when it is not okay. But if we will speak the truth as the truth is, Amen. the Bible says, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. If we will say it as it is, then we would know that our salvation is paramount. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what your relationship is like with your God. But I want you to know that God is a faithful God. God has not come to condemn us. He loves us too much. That is why he sent his only begotten son to reach out unto us. That is why on Saturday when we go out for outreach, we will also share that message of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you love Jesus, then you'll be an evangelist. Because he says in Matthew 28 that we should go ye out and preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So nobody can say that I am not called to reach out. You might not be able to go with us on Saturday, but at work, there might be a colleague next to you who does not know Christ. Sometimes we don't have to speak it, but our lifestyle can speak to them. And I encourage us to be a living epistle, that all of us will be a living example, that wherever we go, whatever we do, that we will be an example unto God, that people will look at our lives and will not say, because of you, I can't even want to, I don't even want to be bothered about Christianity. But people will look at your life, your temperance, the way you manage yourself, the more you manage your, 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 your self-righteousness, and all the things that you do. And they will say, oh, what is the difference? And that is where you're able to tell them that. Because of Christ. Amen. Beloved, that is the most important thing in life. Amen. I've just come to realize that Death comes, and nobody has died and been buried with their cars. Nobody has died and has been buried with their mansions. But when we get before the Lord, he will ask us a question. What did you do with the life I gave you? Sometimes you think that as you get closer to God, it means that you are becoming a pastor. You don't have to be a pastor. You know, God has called a lot of you. Some of you are lecturers. Some of you are doctors. Some of you are teachers. In your place of work, you are pastors there. Hallelujah. You are pastors. You are ministers. I always tell to the choir, you guys are the music pastors because you prepare the way and the spirit for people to receive the word of God. So don't see yourself as if I'm only young. So you think <laughs> your life is not relevant. But sometimes the song you sing, it ministers to somebody so badly. that even pastor will come and stand here and somersault and it will not touch him. But just for the fact that you've allowed yourself to be used through a song, somebody's life get touched. That is why you hear that sometimes when ministry in music, you find people crying. It's not because anyone has beaten them. Because the spirit of God is communicating with them. God can use you, beloved. But if we will have to grow in Christ, then we need to grow by first of all believing in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. This morning is a reflective sermon. And I want you to rise up on your feet and ask yourself. The Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. But just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just talk to him wherever you are. If you know that the Lord is not the Lord of your life, you know yourself. 
if you know that he hasn't taken absolute control over your life, you know, you can talk to your God wherever you are and ask him, oh God, I want to come to you and I want to surrender my life unto you because I can do nothing without you. The Bible says, unless a man be born again, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. Have you given your life to Christ? Or have you given it to Christ but you have taken it away again and you have held it by yourself? Do you want to re-surrender your life unto him? Because when you surrender your life unto God, everything will work beautifully. You will have peace with your God. Father, we thank you. Can we sing I surrender, please? Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Let the Spirit of God minister to 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 you. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Father, we surrender our lives unto you. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness.
whatever he asks you, that you will surrender unto him, regardless of the difficulties, regardless of the price. Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Salvation is your personal relationship with your God. And I pray that as we leave this service, that we will all reflect on our very lives. And we will all ask God to wash us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Because his word says so, Lord, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord make sure that your relationship with him never goes hanging. That you will stay connected with your God. Because beloved, that is the most important thing in life. It is not the money in your bank account. It is not the beautiful shoes you wear. But it is your relationship and your service to your God. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because you're a good God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.